this super wild card weekend recap and Monday Night Football Props edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. WinBet is now live in Arizona, Colorado, Indiana, Louisiana, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Tennessee, and Virginia. For boosted same game parlays to live in game odds, WinBet has what you need to win. Sign up today, bet 100, get 100 at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash win bet that's sports gambling podcast.com slash W I N N B E T state restrictions apply. We're also brought to you by the NBA gambling podcast, MLK day, bingo boards, hundred dollar gift card for every bingo hit details exclusively on the SGPN app. What's up everybody. You're watching SGPN. Fuck the Cowboys. Let's go baby. Everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Hello, world. Hello, Ryan. Congrats on your New York Giants, Woo. and let's go Saturday night, Lincoln Financial Field, 8:15 p.m. East. No, oh, it's gonna be a night couple game, extra, huh? couple extra hours to get lit. Uh, we have to we have to get ask Colby's opinion if Lincoln Financial is going to be lit because it's going to be lit. Oh man, this is uh, Giants on so a short week, another hurdle to overcome. Classic NFL. Already laying the groundwork for excuses. No, no excuses. excuses to be had in no the excuses. National Football League. Oh man, I'm fired up for a number of reasons. One, we get Kramer versus me, Eagles Giants for the entire week, and. I made a shit ton of money. I'm not going to lie with the anytime touchdowns. It was a heater of all heaters. And hopefully you guys are tuning into the pregame show, youtube.com slash sports gambling podcast. Gave out Brock, uh, Brock Purdy yesterday at plus 650. Uh, a listener called in and turned us on to Cole Beasley. You know me, Cole Beasley, anytime touchdowns. Yes, sir. Hit that plus twelve hundred. Hit my Mike Gasecki, uh, plus six fifty. I even threw in, and I feel bad touting this because I didn't actually mean? put you it don't out feel there. Bad. I I did also hit a Kirk Cousins anytime touchdown, and I was slightly mad that I didn't play him first Sean, touchdown. Sean's mood after that hit for the rest of the game was just like, <laughs> this is lame. What am I doing here? I, <laughs> like when you cash a ten to one on the first drive, everything else is just like, eh, all right. It's a moot point. I get it. I get. It. Did you mention the Miami Dolphins anytime defense? Kramer touchdown? hit that. Oh. Hit a number of his other props. I think was it Moonoff that gave out that crazy uh, Giants SGP that. No, that was, that that was, was me. Yours? It was the the sweat of all sweats. Dan Dan Jones to rush for eighty, <laughs> Saquon to get sixty receiving. Giants to win would have paid two forty to one. Sean Dan Jones ended up losing the eighty on the kneel down, and Saquon went for fifty three or fifty four. What a fucking sweat! But Sean. Yes. Dan Jones did lead the game in rushing, which 10 to 1. That was, I mean, oh just God. casually giving out 10 to 1. Nine I, to we're, one. we're just dropping them left and right. I, again, when you brought that up, I'm like, shit, that's a good price. But of course, I'm not going to play Danny Dimes, AKA Daniel Jones. Chat is alive and well. And of course, we're also live over on Discord, sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash discord raise your hand if you want to get in on the chat we of course uh answer any questions that are uh, that come in via the hotline any question yeah sure i mean what kind of what a, everyone's just going to ask about picks and again if you want to throw someone in the locker i think there's a couple uh i mean i i want i'll start it off i want to toss jalen waddle in the locker because it really would have been fun if they if the Dolphins pulled up uh pulled off that upset. He had a bunch of big drops, but kudos to the Dolphins for hanging around and, and getting that cover. That was a I mean, all the games today were really, really good games. They came down to the last drive. The NFL is king, Sean. Mm -hmm. I included that in the in the the share, the social share for the live episode. NFL remains king. I mean, it's the NFL, I guess. Big plays are bigger. The moment's bigger. Players step up and make big plays. 
just about everyone was on top of their game with the exception of Mr. Greg Olson and the Fox <laughs> broadcast team. I mean, he was two, really things, bad. two things really should blow your mind. If you're a football fan, one straight up Greg Olson's fucking trash. Can't be the number one guy for Fox. Uh, uh, I respect your ability to broadcast football, but Greg Olson fucking sucks too. How are we just learning about the fact that there's a chip in the fucking ball? Yeah. What? Why are we dragging these poor volunteers out there with the chains? <laughs> it's you know it's a throwback. Uh, Kramer's of course referring to oh. the Tyler Huntley snoop where he almost put it over the goal line and the chip measured it as zero point zero yards. But watching it live, you could tell he was uh, he was short. All right, we got so much to get to, and again, we will be giving out our Monday night only props uh, towards the end. There also going to announce the uh, win bet lines. For the divisional round, we already got a couple calls here on the line, or wow. I assume they're calls. Uh, first up, I think he is in Las Vegas. You know him mm. as producer in the Golf Gambling Podcast, a number of other shows on SGPN. Mr. Cameron Kerr, what's happening, Cameron? What is up, gentlemen? <laughs> How are y'all doing? Doing great. I I I can sense a hint of Vegas voice. Uh, but uh, how was your how was your uh, wild card weekend? Yeah, uh, a hint of Vegas voice is probably right. It for some reason the first night I'm always like just super tired. Um, <laughs> for but some reason, it's been a fantastic day. Literally walked in to the sports book at uh, Caesar's Palace when I first got here. Hopped in the Uber, came over. Mike Kosicki, anytime touchdown. Right when I walk in, oh. I don't. I don't. I think Kramer gave that out. No, that um, was me. Uh, it, we can. Yeah, no, Kramer's no, also on it. No, I uh, uh, But and then immediately walked over to the roulette table, put down five dollars on three different numbers. Oh no! Each one, so three different numbers. It hits for like I, I don't know, one hundred and fifty bucks. Do the same three numbers again. It hits again. Uh oh. And I walk away. So it, it's been a heater so far. I was on the Dolphins. Uh, sorry, I was on the Bills, Giants, and Ravens tonight. Um, so it's been great so far. Awesome. And yeah, we are. Uh, we, it sounds like we'll be hanging out Wednesday because we're coming out. We're going to be doing uh, two shows again live at the beautiful win there in the blue wire studios, 10 a.m. Pacific and 4 p.m. Pacific divisional round playoff picks. And, and, it'll and if be you're good. wondering why we can't, we're going, we went, we already had the trip planned for next week. It's because the NFL gave us the results <laughs> in, in advance so we could plan. Yeah. That. <laughs> Thank you. Shout out to the NFL for passing those along. We appreciate it. We could give all, out all the right answers, but that, you know, again, we want to keep it entertaining. It's not fun if you win every time. So One we got to keep people. One market at a time, Sean. <laughs> guys, yes. guys, don't don't fire me for saying this, but the Cowboys are winning tomorrow. Oh no, I no! Yes. I was just gonna say, what's your best bet for tomorrow night? Yeah, so Cowboys money line gonna be a big bet. Um, <laughs> my favorite bet of the day or of the night is gonna be Micah Parsons over one over a half sack. He just had a baby three days ago. So he's getting a baby boost. Uh, I'm going to parlay that with the CD lamb anytime. And Micah Parsons uh, over Micah Parsons have four tackles plus assists. Oh my God. That's uh, that. I appreciate the degeneracy of that parlay, but I mean, that's a lot of positive things for the Cowboys and who knows these young people, they don't know how to power through like, without sleep. So maybe <laughs> Micah uh, will be a little tired. Well, uh, Cameron, thanks for calling in. Uh, worst of luck, and we'll see you. We'll see you Wednesday. Let it ride, guys. We'll see you guys on Wednesday. Let it ride. I, right. I think if you're a Steelers fan, it's equally as gross to bet on the Cowboys, <laughs> right? Yeah, you know, I I always thought they were like horrible, horrible rivals. Got another call on the sportsgamblingpodcast.com Discord hotline. Uh, brought to you, of course, by WinBet. Bet big, win bigger. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash WinBet. Of course, bet $100. Uh, get $100. State restrictions apply. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash WYNNBET. Of course, we're going to be giving out our own win build the bets later, AKA their same game parlays. Joining us on the line, you know him from the college baseball experience, ton of other shows as well. 
uh, college experience, does a ton of stuff. Mr. Noah B. What's up, Noah? How's it going, Sean Ryan? Thanks for accepting my call. Um, as you guys may have known from my Christmas call, I kind of uh, boycotted watching the NFL because my Lions would win when I wouldn't watch them. <laughs> yes, you were so, in a, you were in quite the predicament. Yes, yes. Um, so we then get screwed over. So I'm throwing a couple of people into a locker today. That's why I'm calling. Ooh, love uh, it. Who's going in the NFL into the locker for throwing out uh, this Adam Schefter revo- report at like 9 a.m. of Super Wild Card Sunday, uh, blaming the refs and making them, uh, you know, wear it for all these terrible calls in that Seattle Seahawks game, throwing the Seahawks in the locker for only playing one half and then throwing <laughs> the Dolphins in a locker for playing with a half her team instead of the Steelers in there as well. So. All right, I like it. You had a you you have very a, targeted. I like well, it. and and thankfully we have big lockers here at the Sports yeah. Gambling Podcast Network, so Noah can fit in a lot of the guys. Yeah, of course there were some shady calls, mm. and uh, I think you retweeted someone had a, a great line like it is just very much the Lions to be getting <laughs> to be getting boned in calls for a game they're not even in. Like it really was. A uh, tough beat for the Lions, but hey, they went over their win total. Dan Campbell's got them ready to go, so I, I had little hope in Motown. We'll be hyped about yeah, it little, next year. Little hope. Let's 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 just hope we don't lose Ben Johnson to <laughs> the six teams that he's already interviewed with. I so. know that I is that I think is that's a done deal. Yeah, you could be in trouble. <laughs> don't worry, Dan Campbell's taking over play calling. So good. Oh, to, no. You guys will get a fullback. <laughs> you guys will be. Uh, it'll be a great offense. All right, no, no for sure. No, thanks a lot for calling in action. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let it ride, Noah. Good to hear from you. Let it che- ride. Check out the uh, college baseball, college football experience, Noah, helping out, ah. doing a ton uh, with those guys. All right, Kramer. I guess sounded like you might have been ripping, ripping something there at the end. <laughs> Maybe ripping not up a, some tickets. Not a piece of paper. That's for sure. Well, and and we have we've e- gone this far and have not even mentioned the. I mean, in the ultimate, Did we forget something else? in the ultimate millennial turn, Mike McDaniel gets uh, busted for vaping on the sideline. It was pretty hilarious. Do we have confirmation? Well, we didn't see him exhale. So uh, again, we don't know if what he was, if he was smoking, but it certainly looked like he well, have you was seen on the sideline and took a deep inhale of something. The millennials now they figured out a way how, how to <laughs> exhale out of their ass. So. I'm sure he's got that <laughs> some sort of weird um, circular breathing thing he had going on. Human centipede. If you've never seen it, look it up. <laughs> or don't. All right. Should we? Uh, I mean, we already kind of talked about the uh, games that happened <sighs> yesterday. Got to talk about the games today. Obviously, Miami loses. They get the cover. Any any big takeaways from that Miami Bills game? Uh, I mean, <laughs> Skylar Thompson was eerily close to beating Josh Allen in the I, postseason. I mean, Josh Allen, all the, all the rookie turn. quarterbacks I thought played well. Oh yeah. A lot, a lot of newcomers to the postseason performing well. Um, you know, you got Trevor Lawrence in one half of football, <laughs> uh, Josh Allen, uh, two interceptions though. Continue and a to- fumble return for a touchdown. Like we, we keep, <laughs> we've coined the phrase of Josh Allen doing Josh Allen things as an insult. And you, you saw it today. Like I, I just don't think he, they can be trusted to cover big spreads, especially as a favorite. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I yeah. I mean, I it. Skylar Thompson was the fucking quarterback. <laughs> Skylar Thompson had some. Tua good, wins this game by two touchdowns. I, well, I don't know. I mean, I I think it was more on the receivers. Like Skylar Thompson, yeah. I thought had some good balls. Like Jalen Waddle himself had two massive drops. Uh, Tyreek Hill had a, had a couple drops. The Waddle ones were big though. The Waddle ones were like downfield explosive play type stuff that if they catch it, it, it it's almost certainly a different game. Yeah. I don't know this bills team They're uh, people don't, aren't going to want to say it. They're not going to speak about the bills. Like they spoke about the Minnesota Vikings, but it feels a little bit like we're uh, there's some smoke and mirrors going on. <laughs> I mean, they can absolutely be awesome, but how much of that game were they playing peak bills football? Maybe a quarter. Yeah, it, it, it's which you know says, they, they got says a lot to, of how, about how good they are. They got out to a fast start, and some of that was Miami just you know um, self destructing. So I, I don't know. I, I mean, pretty. I mean, you shouldn't be playing a tight game with Skylar Thompson. 
does DeMar Hamlin, of course, watch the game from home yep. remote. He did talk to the team in the week leading up and we keep talking about when do you actually trot him out? Do you save him for the AFC championship game? Or is that looking ahead? Do, do we see DeMar Hamlin at this Bengals game? The bills, what would are, you set the the line bills are absolutely looking ahead. <laughs> no, I mean, this is don't, don't you, don't you dust them out? Like th this is where you bring them out. You're playing the Bengals. The significance of him being back to see his team play weeks after it happening against the Bengals. I, I, I think, I think I've adjusted my, my recovery phase to this is when you, he's got to be on the field. Well, and, th and then conference the championship, he, he wears played. the yeah, that's what I mean. It, it it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and and he's tweeting, which means he's, you know, he probably sit on the sideline, right? Sorry, I'm just reacting to some line movement, early line movement. I'm seeing. <laughs> I will get to that in just a second. Yeah, so for me, it's just I I felt decent about the handicap. Like the the Bills are obviously the better team, but there's just a lot of issues with that offense with the turnovers that I think I, I we'll see what this Bengals team because. The big news um, from the Bengals Ravens game, you know, kind of an ugly AFC North game. Uh, we picked it at seven, ended up pushing out there. Probably, if you bet the Ravens, you you most likely uh, cash there because it went up to eight, eight and a half, nine, even. Some people got tens uh, later on when it became clear that Lamar was not playing. But Cincinnati lost their left tackle as well. It's one thing, you know, they were already out right guard and right tackle, but they also lost. Their left tackle, but the Bengals have a. I, I certainly didn't see that that fumble return for 98 yards on the goal line coming, but the Bengals do have a certain amount of swagger where Joe Burrow is just, hey, I'm gonna just win these games. Well, that's the other side of it. Just like we're talking about the Bills, um, you know, Tyler Huntley pretty bad. <laughs> they almost lost to Tyler Huntley. Maybe, maybe should have. I. If not for a miraculous play, they lose to Tyler Huntley. I, I don't know how to. Th there's both the both sides of this game. Bengals Bills could have lost to backup quarterbacks in the first round. And Maddie Modbot in the YouTube chat to clear to clarify. I'm laughing because no, we were not implying that uh, Hamlin was going to play. Uh, we just uh, whether or not he's going to show up at the stadium mm -hmm. uh, because he's recovering at his house. Again, I, I'm not a doctor. I don't know what the timetable is, but he's like, he's watching TV. He's tweeting. Would I be shocked if he's in the owner's press box? That's the, yeah. I, I, put him on. I, the I still, I big still, screen. I'm projecting. He will not play uh, on the game. No, I think they saved that for the super bowl. <laughs> they, they will at some point, I think run out with his Jersey, uh, but we'll see what they do there. And uh, magic man Blanco, of course, checking in shout out to magic man Blanco. He said he had the, uh, he had the Chargers, or sorry, the Jaguars live at ten to one. Oh man, still reeling from that uh, poor Justin Decker collapse. Is there a gentleman's bet for you guys this week? Well, what's that's a, what's the gentleman's bet? Well, just you know, whatever. A gentleman's bet is actually the lamest kind of bet because it's usually no, it's usually no stakes. <laughs> this is a I'm throwing this challenge to the audience. Oh, the the best uh, bet um, proposed bet. At gambling podcast, tweet us your best bet between Ryan and myself, and not just money because that's boring. What is the bet? And the best suggestion will win an SGPN gift card, a uh, hundred dollar SGPN gift card. Hmm. I'm intrigued. I couldn't even think of a suggestion. <laughs> I mean, I, we it's not. Smoking my weed. It's not like this is our first. Like this is our. We've been to war for like. 10 years, all yeah. right? We well, that's why I get it. Like it's it, we it's, hit like five. Like, you've been in a relationship for a long time. You need to spice things up. I don't want to brag. This, this but is five why the figures this today in, in <laughs> fucking various. As I, I said to a couple of fans who slid into the DMS, I hit a ridiculous amount of silly bets today. So yeah, don't yeah. come with some weak ass. Like, uh, you know, we got to wear Again. each other's Jersey. <laughs> oh no. Again, uh, <laughs> not a costume. <laughs> well, we already have a, a decent suggestion. Boston uh, capper in the chat. It's a baby fucking wheel, man. <laughs> Loser goes dry for a month. Weed counts, Ryan. Oh, wow. That is fire makes fire. things dry. Hey, uh, real quick uh, before we get to uh, the lines here. Want to uh, shout out? Uh, we had been running uh, Apple podcast reviews, giving away uh, hmm. gift cards to the best reviews. This the this week's winner, Corey Como. 
Um, his review says this show is the balls with a flame emoji. Is, Pre- that, is that a compliment? Oh yeah, all okay. balls, Ryan. Uh, pretty upset. I just found this podcast after the regular season is over. Glad I got it for the playoffs and all next season. I love the show, boys. Keep it up. Oh. Even did a saluting emoji with another flame emoji. Corey, uh, drop us an email podcast at sports gambling podcast dot com. We will hook you up with that sweet, sweet well, gift card. And just to be clear, part of the part of the church of the DGENs is to not wash any idols at all. So we appreciate the salute, but it's not necessary. No, I don't mind being saluted. I am I am I am a fan of the troops. You gotta not, watch out for Mussolini I'm over. Not, here. I'm not like Ryan Kramer, known communist. That's you, a chain of command thing. <laughs> all right. Uh we gotta break down the we got to break down the Giants game. Joining us on the line, you know him from the NFL Gambling Podcast, Mr. Terrell Furman. Uh, Terrell, what's happening? Oh my gosh, fellas. Greetings. Man, it's, it's so good to be right. So great to be right. Terrell, I got to ask how old were you the last time the Giants <laughs> won a playoff game? The last time the Giants won a playoff game, I was 15. Oh my God, right? 15 years old. <laughs> You're making us feel oh. old. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, a lot has happened yeah. between now and then, Terrell. The, the the level that you can celebrate the victory has also been ratcheted up, I'm sure, <laughs> with some sweet oh, ass the bets. The level that I can celebrate is is way higher. I remember celebrating my first Giants playoff victory win. Well, not it wasn't the first win, but the first season that we took it in 2007, and I actually got in trouble because uh, when Tony Romo threw that pick in the end zone, I screamed "fuck the Cowboys," <laughs> and I got I got beaten. Well, well, you were even younger back then. I mean, Jesus, this is uh, you shouldn't be saying those kind of horrible things. Well, I will say I have taught my children to identify the Cowboys logo and do what's needed. Well, see, I, that was the only, I had a known exception. Uh, that was the only time I was allowed to yeah. curse was if I was directing it at the Dallas Cowboys. So you gotta, <laughs> you gotta talk to your parents, get get some, uh, get some rule yeah, exceptions going. I think the nowadays kids to get the exceptions <laughs> back then it was frowned upon. Do they still make kids eat soap? Is that a thing? Oh yeah. Well, that was for me. It's I'm probably, sure. it's probably like sure a crime. Like, yeah. No, that's yeah. That's definitely like a crime. You're getting canceled <laughs> on Twitter for that. I mean, AP missed like six games for, for suggesting his oh. kid go find a, a <laughs> stick. Yeah. T- 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 times have changed a bunch. Hey, any, and what Terrell, what, what's your takeaway? Where's the, what's uh you a little nervous about coming to Philadelphia Saturday night? Sean, now come on! Now, I can't believe you just asked me that. Am I nervous? This is what I've been waiting for. This is the moment I was waiting for. Can't this is exactly wait. the situation. So we this- we had Terrell on the pregame, or we had Terrell on the prop. I don't what whatever show we had Terrell on yeah. earlier this week. A lot of shows. We before Sean uh, came into the studio, where we we were having a discussion about the potential of Giants Eagles. And I will say this: Terrell was didn't seem terribly worried. What seemed to like, be invited. Not worried at all. Oh. Come, on, come on. They're really that makes two of us. three times in one season. Three times in one season? Yeah. Do you really think like do you seriously think that you're gonna pull that off? Let me yes. tell you a story. <clears throat> it was twenty it was twenty oh eight. The Giants uh were heading off in the divisional round after an upset victory <laughs> against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They were heading oh, off to the number yeah. one seed, and that number one seed was a division foe who had beaten them twice in the regular season. Uh, they were catching a couple more points. I think it was closer to ten that day, Sean. If you remember, we uh, emptied our bankroll on that money line, mm-hmm. cash that ticket. But I, I, you know, I like to reminisce about the the past, and I'm a football historian, Sean. So I was just getting warm and fuzzy thinking about how these scenarios are lining up so nicely. Almost lost to the third string a couple weeks ago, Terrell. They almost lost so to the third I, string. I, I'm hearing that a lot. That uh, hey, oh, I'm having a conversation. Hey, with hey, 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 Jalen Hurts. So, Jalen Hurts played one sorry, football game in a month. Sorry, in a month. He's played one game. Sorry to interrupt your podcast here, guys, but. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome to be a guest on the Die Hard Giants <laughs> podcast. I heard that it's all the rage. Here's my question. I hear all these Giants fans talking shit of we almost beat you with our backups. We almost beat you with our backups. So are you going to I so you're gonna be starting Davis Webb come Saturday? 
No. What are you talking? So about? you're going to bring out the team we beat 48 oh, 22? All right, Terrell. We should just leave it here. It's confirmed. <laughs> I'm just they, telling you that an adjusted Giants minus three is the play in this game as well. The 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 hostile forces are scared. They are disorganized. They're not sure what to do. They're bringing up Davis Webb. This is amazing, Terrell. No. We are right where we need to no, be. No, Gi- Giants fans are talking shit. We uh, got the better quarterback. <laughs> we almost. Oh wow! Right. Now you're now you're crossing the line. Now oh, you're crossing the line. A man who should have won the MVP. Have the- <laughs> it's a rob from him. You don't wait, think wait, he wait, has wait, a chip wait, on his come shoulder? Terrell. What is Jalen Hurts' record in the playoffs? Mm. Zero and one. Oh. <laughs> hey, what is Daniel Jones' record in the playoffs? One and zero. One and zero. And they're both about to be one and one come Saturday night at Lincoln Financial Field. Eighteen and two, the last twenty. All right, thanks for calling in. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait, wait! I gotta give my uh, your bet suggestion. There you oh, go. Okay, yeah. Suggestion. Let's hear it. So, you guys should jersey swap, but like actually jersey swap your lives. So if Kramer, if the Giants win, Sean has to go like coach a youth soccer oh, no. game. Oh, no. <laughs> and if uh, Sean somehow miraculously oh, wins, then Kramer will have to go do a live <laughs> comedy show. Yes, host a stand-up oh, well, show. Oh, First of all, wow. this is yeah. this is there's no way Sean. I already even this know the, not a, I already even the, know the show you have to do. Uh, I mean, I mean. It, Day in the shoes. I, I don't know if that's a fair bet, Sean. Well, Ryan did once uh, roast Nikki Glazer. So now that Nikki Glazer's, we used to tell that oh, story. I, host, no one, I was the roast master, Sean. Now Nikki Glazer's famous, so people actually <laughs> know who she is. God help us if someone that's, has those tapes. That is a yeah. You want to talk about being canceled? <laughs> if you find those tapes, destroy them. Yeah. All right, Terrell. That's actually a pretty good suggestion. Thanks for calling in. Worst of luck Saturday. <laughs> Go oh, Giants. Yeah, we're gonna kick your ass. Let's go. <laughs> all right. Uh my I mean, again, we all watch the games here, but Kirk Cousins checking down on fourth and eight was just uh, it was, who? I'm sorry, who's that? Kirkland Cousins? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Who shout out to um <laughs> whoever gave us the name Kirkland uh, uh, Cousins. That was a good one. Delightful. You like that? That you like that. I mean here here like the 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 takeaway of the game was like that that offense was it still scares you from time to time when they do the right thing but what like why would he make that throw he forgot this was no different than when he kneeled the time he was supposed to spike it he just <laughs> forgot what was worse i'm being dead serious include the weight of it being a playoff game kneeling when you're supposed to spike it to stop the clock and yeah. miss, missing out on a chance to to uh, kick a field goal in a meaningless game <laughs> or ending your playoff run by not throwing it down the field to Justin Jefferson and giving him a and chance to make a play. Again, he kind of looked open too. I I don't know. Adoree what, Jackson says, I mean, pay him some respect. He played great. Yeah, I, either that or Kirk Cousins sucks. I I think it's a combination <laughs> of both. Both things can be true, Sean. I, I I think they could be related. All right, let's get to the uh, opening lines are up over at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash win bet. And of course, if you have a gambling problem, 1-800-522-4700. Here's what we got for the early game on Saturday. Uh, Jags chiefs number opens at nine seems about right. I mean, I think when they played earlier, the, the number was probably something similar, right? Uh, yeah. And I, I think we were I, like, I was planning this bet. Day, like as soon as this game ended, they're running around on the field, uh, back yeah. to back, dump the Gatorade weeks minus. Not, is there any chance this spread gets smaller? No. Like if you're predicting which way this goes 10 I, or seven, I would say 10, 10 by a mile. You open it at nine. Cause you're scared of the teasers, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then you start, you move it up to nine and a half for teaser protection because everyone's going to talk about putting you know, KC in the teaser. So uh, yeah, I, th- I think, I think nine makes sense, but I think it closes higher. I, if you like the chiefs at nine, probably want to bet it now. I'm going to look hard at this because I did. I've kind of talked myself into like, the, 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 this is going to be a, it's gonna be a fun game. The Doug Peterson, Andy Reed angle is fun. Yeah. That, that, that is an angle. And they, they had some moments where they hung around with them. I, you know, my first instinct was with you probably leaning chiefs, but I, I'm going to yeah. dig in because the lot chiefs as a big favorite is uh, divisional round is usually for the favorites though. 
No, it's uh, it's wild card. Divisional round is uh, for the dogs. I mean, I'm gonna have to do the I'm, but pull the numbers. I'm, I think that's wrong. But on Saturday night, it will definitely be for the favorites. Okay. Uh, Eagles right now over at WinBet minus seven, minus one oh eight, and shout out to WinBet. All these early numbers on sides and totals are minus one oh eight. So I, if you're paying minus one ten, I don't know what you're doing. Seven and a half. Uh, I saw some places, but they haven't had an even seven here. I'm not gonna. I'll save my pick for the show, right? Oh wow! But I mean, same thing. Which way is this number going? Is I, it is it go back? I mean, it was it was clearly available at seven and a half for some time. Uh, early money, obviously, coming in on the Giants, I guess, to move it back down to seven. But I, I I'd be surprised if it gets to six and a half. Yeah, so would I. I think it's gonna be seven, maybe seven and a half. I, mm. I don't see. It. I'd be shocked if it gets to eight because already people are making the case for the Giants. The TMZ takes of this is like the old Giants team that went on a run. I, you can already see people talking TMZ to themselves. TMZ take, just yeah. reminiscing about the past. You're connecting dots. So you're living in the rear view mirror. You're the right? one connecting the dots. I'm it's with just stars in the sky. There's no, there's no one shooting an arrow. <laughs> D Bettis said Eagles are a lock. D Bettis up in this biatch. Uh, as far as the uh, Sunday game, we only have one uh, posted so far. Bengals Bills. I think I saw some five and a halfs earlier. Right now, uh, WinBet has it at a. Uh, four and a half. Uh, so it opened. It opened at five and a half. Immediately got smashed down to four. Uh, has been bought back to four and a half. Still some fours out there. Uh, this is an interesting one. I, I mean, when we discussed this before the line came out, what we thought it was going to be, kind of right on that spot, right? Just give give the Bills a little bit more respect than the three, uh, three and a half. Again, with, like, does this line actually? Have a chance to close at three? No, three or seven. I I would say, oh, that's tough. I get, huh? I guess early th- money came in on the on the Bengals at five and a half. So I ma- mean, makes you, me think it's going to be hard. If to you get put to it seven. at four, I think people are going to hammer the Bills. Hammer. Uh, it's four in places right now. Yeah. So I I I don't think it. I I would be shocked if it closes under four. See what we wake up to, Sean. Let's see what we wake up to. No, maybe maybe it will what, keep what? sliding down because I, yeah, the Bengals are interesting too. Like I before betting this game, I want to know more about that left tackle. Is he going to play? That's huge. Those injuries were big. Uh, what channel is the Giants game on? It's a good question. I would assume Fox, but I I don't know. God help us if it's Troy and Joe. Which by the way, I saw earlier in the chat. I D Bettis is an Eagles guy. And I hope he was joking, but he said Troy and Joe are the best in the business. <laughs> that is a disgusting act. Saturday night on Fox. Oh, Greg Olson again? No, they can't. No. How is Greg Olson their number one crew? That no, makes we no can't. Sense. We do, who do we write a letter to? You think? If anyone knows who we can write at Fox to make, I mean, I'd, I'd be happy to take USFL Commissioner Moose Johnston. That, well, that's also a, Cowboys Bucks uh, on Sunday is Fox as well, or sorry, Cowboys no. Bucks versus 49ers. That's also Ooh, in Fox. Which well, I don't know, dude. It, it, Philly versus New York is is pot, if it's Cowboys Niners, we could be bailed out with with a Greg Olson late West Coast swap. So like, but we don't want the Cowboys to win though. We're re, 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 but then it's the Tom Brady return to the <laughs> Bay Area. Very torn here. I great. I mean, as someone who hadn't probably paid attention too much to Greg Olson's announcing before today, Sean, was that not the worst performance you've ever seen? It's it was pretty bad. Worse I mean, than Trevor Lawrence's first half. <laughs> not the second <laughs> half. Not the second half. First I half. mean, uh, we got some question. Nick Fortune wants to know Kramer, who is the best current announcer duo? Best current announcer duo. Uh, who does Kevin Harlan do it with on CBS? It to me, it's it's it's. Uh, Honestly, I think most of the time, a, a, the color guy can't really affect it. I'm not a huge fan of Burkhart either, which is maybe why the Greg Olson thing's so annoying. But Greg Olson just tries to talk too much. Uh, obviously, Al Michaels. Uh, you know what? I'll say Al Michaels and Herb Street, and I'll even say this. Sean. Yeah. Herb Street didn't think he was going to be any good at the NFL level. Surprised me. Surprised me. Well, I mean, Herb Street looks a lot better when you compare it to Tony. <laughs> Tony Dungy, that was that was also really bad. Pretty lifeless, a performance. And 
I think Al Michaels needs a young guy to uh, get the energy level up. And uh, Ho- Herb Street, I thought he was good with. So we'll see. Someone brought up Mark Sanchez. He's not. Uh, he's in a slight upgrade on Greg Olson, but yeah. he's not much better. I do think we're uh, we're approaching a weird place where uh, we we really need some. Maybe they should uh, take a take a. You know what? I heard Michael Vick, Vick say some pretty uh, pretty provocative things today on the on the Fox pre pregame show. Why not put Michael Vick in the booth? Yeah, but that's way more interesting than half these fucking chuckleheads. Well, like Magic, Greg Olson, Magic Man Blanco pointing out best announcing group in the world is SGP uh-huh. Sean Ryan, and he could fumble, pick Dundee, uh, Colby himself, Laser. Uh, what else we got? Magic Man Blanco, uh, or no, sorry, it was uh, making bacon. He had a what was his? Uh, you want me to scroll up? Let me see. He had chat a, is so fire. We got. I know. Scrolling. All right, here we go. He said, "Pray for me, Kramer. I've got a seven hundred to one parlay riding on C.D. Lamb, forty yards, uh, first half, forty yards, second half. Should I be confident in this? LOL. Legends for the Cole Beasley anytime touchdown. Uh, I I would. Yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna. A. I'm not gonna pray for that. B. I'm not gonna pray, uh, but I did. I mean, maybe after today and all those those Jesus commercials, Sean. Uh, we'll see. I might change my tune. Jesus did seem like he was the ultimate dog, but uh, dog. yeah, no, I'm, I'm I'm not rooting for C.D. Lamb to do anything tomorrow. I'm sorry. He might get there because he has a tremendously high floor. Uh, uh, John T. pointing out Gus Johnson and Akib to leave. Oh man, yes sir. That was really a fun combo. Why did they kill that experiment? Well, was he, it the football incident where his brother the, shot someone? You mentioned the word kill, Ryan, and there were oh. some unfortunate circumstances uh, uh, where Akeem thought it was best to take a uh, step away from. For, the line. For, yeah, it was his brother for that. I mean, he he wasn't that. Uh, RG three people are asking about. I would have said yes a couple months ago, but his Twitter takes lately have been awful. Yeah, just awful. Well, and he was <laughs> he was on team don't play. He was on team don't play, but I think what we're talking about the Lamar Jackson story to me, it makes Lamar look really bad that he didn't fly with the team. If it was just an injury thing, you show you fly with the team. You're with the team, but injured players don't travel, Sean. What? No, I'm just, Oh, okay. some teams have that policy. I'm just, I'm saying it as a joke because the cat team captain and your quarterback would probably travel with the team if it was important. You know who's you traveling be, with the team? Sterling Shepard, and he got hurt four months ago. You'd be sitting on the sidelines helping anything you can do to help Tyler Huntley, uh, right? Maybe you it's, can. Aren't you sitting there on the bench, look going whoa. over the tablet, like, "Hey, do this. Do you see this blitz pickup? This happens here." Sean, we we know what happened. His agent told him it was best if he stayed home for the game. <laughs> Right, of course, pointing out he is his own agent. All right, let's get to the props. Kramer, kick it off. What is your first prop for Monday night football? Dak over 16 and a half rushing yards. It's a playoff game. This number's pretty low. And Todd Bowles that loves That is to- a disgusting act. Oh, it means he's running for his life, Sean. It's great. Todd Bowles loves the blitz. This just feels like a, an easy way to start with a positive, I guess, cowboy angle. 16 and a half rushing yards that gets home. Yes. All right. Uh, for, I mean, oh, I, Matt, Matt, I'm sorry, Sean magic man with a great line <laughs> shit. Even Dan Marino traveled with the fins. Very, very true. Yeah. Come on. Jim Kelly was there today. Adrian even, Peterson was in Minnesota even, rooting on the Vikings. Even known sour puss Carson Wentz came with the team, even though he hated false. What a mm. pussy. He All sat right. in the booth though. Leonard Fournette over 35 and a half rushing yards. These numbers are ridiculous. We got playoff Lenny. What are we doing? They they rested him last week. He's completely fresh. I mean, the last time we saw a completely fresh Leonard Fournette was opening night against the Dallas Cowboys, where he went 21 for 127. It seems like Brady has taken over the offense. He loves vets. He loves Leonard Fournette. I, I don't see why he doesn't get this. Like, what am I missing? I I was very surprised. I, I'm with you. I won't throw it out as one of mine. Very surprised that was the number. Very surprised. I think he could get a big workload. His name's Playoff Lenny. If we're wrong about this, it's not our fault. <laughs> it's his name's fault. Uh, prop number two for me, and I'll, I'll point out because I'm not going to use it. But Playoff Lenny to go over a hundred total yards is three to one. Yeah, there there's some. I mean, but we'll get. To, I have some more fun shit in the build. The so. alt stuff for him, uh, like fifty to one rushing yards, is is pretty crazy. I mean, Jarrett Patterson for the Commanders went for seventeen and seventy eight. We're gonna play the ladder, right? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I I like his rushing. I, Let's play the line. I'm slightly worried, I guess, about maybe he's more involved in the passing game. But either way, I think he's going to get his play touches. the total yards ladder. Play the total yards ladder. Okay. All right. Look into some ladders. Uh, give me Mike Evans over 22 and a half yards for his longest reception. Sean nailed it. Uh, they he took over the offense, and one of the things Dog. Brady likes to do with Mike Evans is chuck it down the fucking field to him. So uh, I'm gonna play that. I'm not gonna play Mike Evans to get any volume shit because some of those props are a little juiced. I uh, I noticed the same thing. I looked at the the catches and like, yards, whoa. and I'm like, shit, that's pretty high. So I mean, I like him, but I like the matchup. I think he uh, he's a dog. I think he shows up in a big game. So longest reception over 22 and a half yards. You know, we we've talked about how automatic it is for Dak Prescott to throw an interception. Of course, 11 ints in his last seven games. I mean, he, over at win they got it at minus 180 for you know to throw an interception. There's no value there. Are you sure? And what I did was I dug a little deeper. Dak Prescott to throw two interceptions. Ooh. Ryan, that's where you find the value at plus 280. Dog. He's had five games where he's thrown two <laughs> interceptions. He's th three of his last five games. He's thrown two interceptions. Come on, Josh Allen threw two picks. We're getting plus 280. Let's go. Bucks anytime defense is only 450. I think we've ruined the defense of anytime oh, market. Completely decimated. Fucking horrible. Uh all right, Tom Brady over 42 and a half pass attempts is my last one. I'm gonna read something to you. Starting in week 12, 42, 54, 55, 44, 48, 45. Last week only 17. Now I know I said uh, I think <laughs> Lenny could have a big game, so a tiny bit of a hedge here, but I how I don't see a world where this is some sort of crazy low scoring game and he doesn't do something that he's done in literally all but three games this year. Yeah, no, I'm so, in. Uh, well, my build a bet later will be a hedge against this as well, mm. but uh, it's a it's a fun one. So I've been dialed in on these tight end anytime oh touchdowns. The, my white whale for the season. I got my Chig uh, touchdown. I got my Cole Beasley touchdown. Yep. I got a Kirk Cousins rushing touchdown. They, you know, I'm Captain. Uh, what's his name? Captain Arab. Uh, it's probably not it. <laughs> Kate Otten anytime touchdown plus six hundred. I don't understand this price. That's why I already bet it. Because I know it's going to go down. Uh, Kyle Rudolph is doubtful. Cameron Brate's been a healthy scratch at times. Kate Otten has had seven red zone targets the last three weeks. Seven. Do you know how insane that is? He hasn't been efficient, but he's he's gotten the targets. I like it. Can I tell you? I, I want you to also be involved in this one. Okay. You is, we, it, a, is it Scotty Miller no. related? All right. You know we like the backup tight end angle, and yeah. with Kyle Ruf, Rudolph doubtful. Yeah. Who scored a touchdown as recently as what last week, two yep. weeks ago? Their backup tight end is a guy by the name of Co Keft. Keeft. Oh, Co Keeft. Sixteen to one on the anytime right now, Sean. Mm. For the Bucks. So, yeah. Yeah. All right, and we can use that as a nice transition to the first touchdown because he you is just like him because he's called Keef. He's we gonna be he nice and strong. He is gonna be on my first touchdown card. Co Keeft does have one touchdown this season. I know. I think that's what Kate Otten has. Sixteen to one. I uh, sixteen. That's not a first touchdown, Sean. That's an anytime touchdown. <laughs> he is a crazy looking ginger. Uh, do yourself a <laughs> do yourself a favor and uh, co and Google Co Keef. Uh, his uh, shot is pretty funny. All right, you ready for this, Sean? Yeah, these are first touchdowns. The first touchdowns. Yeah. Co Keef, Co Keft, Co Keef, sixty to one. Again, we're st I'm I'm really starting to think that these uh these first touchdowns are no value. I'd much rather have a 16 to 1 anytime than a 60 <laughs> to 1, but I'm still playing it. Yeah. Uh I'm going to play the Bucks defense 30 to 1. You mentioned the pick uh, likelihood. I am going to play Dakota Rain Prescott at 35 to 1. That is a disgusting act. I'd rather I'm, lose money. I'm then go I, I, we were watching the replay of the first time these two teams played, and I was noticing something. Boy, they're really having a hard time scoring touchdowns. So what if Monday Night Football? Everyone's watching. No touchdown scores in game plus one twenty five. Sean, 
Was there any uh I no think- touchdown score in game plus one twenty five? The first game they played, was there a touchdown? I think there was only one, right? There was one. Yeah. Nineteen to three. Okay, for me, system play, K Dot and twenty eight to one. Also, Tom Brady, any time uh, first touchdown, fifty five to one. Are you kidding me? His rushing prop is uh, you can get over a half yard I know, plus one sixty five or something like that. And then our boy Scotty Miller. Scotty, shake it up. How can I be the man when you're the man? Shout out to Scotty Farrell. I do his show on uh, Sports Grid uh every Saturday. Uh, 1220 Pacific. Check that out. He's a, obviously a legend. So Scotty Miller, 90 to one, Tom Brady, 55 to one. And then Kate Otten. and Scotty Miller's hanging around. I, he, he occasionally gets worked in on the deep ball stuff. He was getting more looks obviously when Evans and Godwin were did, banged up. Did you say system play before Scotty Miller too? Yeah. It's, it's Scotty Miller's the real system play. Who am I kidding? Scotty Miller is what Sean <laughs> sees just, himself. If Sean was a, a NFL player, oh, look at Scotty out there. I could be Scotty Miller. If, if Scotty can do it, anyone can do it. Can I? Could I bench press more than Scotty Miller? Maybe. Sean, so, someone find me his. Uh, he's five nine one seventy four. Come on, Sean. We we do have a That's caller. Perfect. We do have a caller. If you want to take it before our our build a bet, okay. before it gets really messy in here. Maybe we invite the guests over before the sawdust all over the floor. All right, Ryan, are you uh, here? I'll pull it up. There we go. Getting ready for some win, build the bets. Oh, and you're right. We do have a caller. Oh, friend of the program, Serial, known Cowboys fan. What's up, Serial? What's up, guys? Congratulations, Ryan. Way to make it to the next round. Should oh. be an interesting week for you guys. Well, that was very nice <laughs> of you to say. Who cereal as a uh, as a Cowboys fan? You guys are gonna get knocked out tomorrow. But <laughs> if you didn't, if you did somehow pull out a miracle, who would you rather face, or who are you rooting for in this game, regardless? Um, are we talking about the Dallas game? No, no in the in the yeah. Giants Giants Eagles game. Giants Eagles game. Who are you rooting for? Oh, um, probably the Giants because we beat them twice. Why not beat them again? Oh wow. That's not how it works. So Ryan, you're on the side <laughs> with the Cowboys. Hope the, la- happy. the last time the ca- <laughs> dare I remember. No, let me take that back. I am Ryan's favorite Cowboys fans. <laughs> well, let me get the Eagles. <laughs> uh, uh, what's happening, Cyril? You got uh, what's your lock for tomorrow? Yeah, don't give us a side. Just give us a prop. Yeah, I was thinking uh, Ezekiel Elliott right now, forty-eight and a half over that. Um, Tampa Bay allows 120 rush yards per game. 4.4 to the running back yards per carry, bottom half and second level and open field yards allowed. Um, and last time they played it, he had five yards of carry in week one. So I think 48 and a half is pretty doable. Now, over 48 and a half, that's not his waist size. That's the rushing yards, right? Oh, <laughs> that's rushing yards, yeah. <laughs> oh, he won't fit in the locker. Oh, Sean, come on. That, you right? got to take a couple and, of and, belly and real shots. quick, we have. I have seen some rumblings within the Reddit uh, sphere that uh, Jerry Jones may be applying a little pressure to make oh, sure, one hundred percent, make sure Zeke get, gets his uh, his big hearty bowl of soup. <laughs> they do go out of their way to feed Zeke, so I am worried. Yeah, a little they do. Bit. I think he even hit that season total at a eight twenty five before the season. Yeah. So even though Tony good. Pollard is obviously better, <laughs> they go out of their way. Yeah, to it's gonna be so Zeke. frustrating. Well, rather have that problem than not have that problem, I guess. <laughs> That's fair. There you go. Hey, worst of luck, cereal. Thanks for calling in, man. No problem. Let See it you guys ride. Next week. One thing we cereal and I could definitely agree on is Jason Garrett, noted piece oh, of shit. You guys are yeah. You how, guys is are yeah he's he's how is he How is he an expert? <laughs> Come on. He is, I hate even listening to him talk on TV. He's like the worst. <laughs> he Dude. really is. He's hated by every fan base in the NFC. So no one's like, he's... can't wait to get to that <laughs> halftime show and hear what Jason Garrett's going to tell me. <laughs> yeah. The, the chemistry between all three of them is just so bad. I mean, uh, he, he reminds me of, um, you know, who's the, the uh, clapper, <laughs> a guy who just stands on the sideline and does nothing. He he seems his like, reactions to the Giants winning a playoff game, fucking priceless. How can you possibly do that segment with Jason Garrett? Find someone else. Find someone else to do the segment. 
get it get a stack guy like the, hey you want a contest I, he's got a weird look in his eyes it reminds me of Christian Bale in American Psycho like he's just got that crazy uh crazy look in his eye yeah he went you to like, an Ivy League school so that fits psychopath you like Huey Lewis in the news <laughs> great a psycho all uh, right, uh, time to close it out with our win. Build your own bet. Sportsgamblingpodcast dot com slash win bet. How big did you go, Sean? Sorry, Ryan. Got to put in my earplugs. Couldn't hear you. Building some bets over here. I I went very reasonable, fifty five to one. Okay, nice. Mike Evans anytime touchdown. Leonard Fournette anytime touchdown. And Kate Otten anytime touchdown. Fifty five to one. Now right, you ready for this one? 80 rushing yards for Leonard Fournette. Okay. 50 receiving yards for Leonard Fournette. And two touchdowns. That's all. Big Leonard Fournette oh game. Playoff Lenny, they call him. 124 to 1. Wow. 124 to it feels correlated. It feels a little correlated. We were so close to Dan Jones and Saquon taking us home. <laughs> uh, that sounds so fun. close, Ryan. That sounds Yet fun. so far. Oh man, we got a big week of shows. Going to be doing a college basketball show uh, tomorrow, aka Monday, and then obviously DFS props, picks, two live shows from Las Vegas on Wednesday, 10 a.m. Pacific for the early show, four o'clock for the late show. Hoping to get some uh, big guests in there as well. It's going to be a fun week as we count things down to the big game Saturday night at Lincoln Financial Field. Uh, tweet us your uh, suggestions for the bet between Kramer and I. And what else? Oh, yeah. Obviously, Apple Podcast Reviews going to be giving away another gift card on uh, next Sunday's recap show. So get those wow. in. Infinite Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean, second the money green, and he is Ryan. Sean, Boston Capper wants me to say that there's also a golf podcast on the network. Kramer, let it ride.